EJ, look at the flare on the Miata. It's far from a different car, but we're gonna make it work. All right, hey guys, you, there was a lot of requests you guys want me to talk about crank size. So, let me give you a little history about the crank's size. So, originally, when you know, you guys always hear about this 175, this magic size that everybody used. Even some, some of you guys might hear like 180. Well, back then when BMX was racing, they want to have longer cranks. The longer cranks give you the extra leverage when you're jumping the gate, because you want that you want that little bit of a, I don't know, jump, I guess. I don't know what other way to say, because you know, I don't, I haven't raced in a long time, my kids haven't raced in a long time, so I don't know a better terminology, but, but you need the extra leverage. Now, as time changed, and people got into freestyle, you don't actually need that leverage anymore. I know some of you guys are talking about, oh my God, you know, I can't use one, 160, who uses that? You're not, but you, you guys really think about it. When you're racing, you're pedaling so much. But when you're doing freestyle, where, where's the pedaling? You're doing flatland, where, where, where's the pedal? You're barely playing, you don't need the leverage. You look at the guys riding trails, same thing. Unless you're, you're like riding trails where you have to pedal up to, a lot of the trails is kind of somewhat downhill. So you get yourself some pretty, like a decent amount of crank and it's just pumping. So you really don't need that leverage anymore, correct? Some of you guys don't know this, but for example, downhill mountain bike, they use 165 cranks. Because you know what? All you need is that crank out of that gate, but you don't need it like a BMX bike. And after that, it's descending. If they have the cranks too long, when you're standing in a wider foot stance because the crank's so long, look, I'm like an Egyptian, dude. It's actually more tiring when you have your legs a little bit further apart than closer apart, so you get less fatigue. So mountain bikes, if you go look at it, look at it up. The specs on a downhill is like a 165. They don't run 175. Now the road bike guys, they are, because you know what, it's all about that leverage, it's all about that speed. So diff different application uh, mean different size cranks. So what I'm gonna talk about today is these BMX. Now that you got a little explanations, what I have here, it sucks because it's better if I have one brand, all different sizes, but unfortunately I don't. I don't know if you guys know, there is a shortage in bicycle parts. So what we have right here is we have the Shadow Odin Cranks. These are 160. Stevie Church, the Primo Stevie Church are 165. The Demolition, the Dennis Anderson Ray Cranks, 170. And the Demolition Ray Cranks, 175. Now, I put it right here, if you guys noticed, right here, this right here, it's, it's, I leveled it out, it's the same size. But look up here, look it up here. Notice how the, the, the crank is skew off, the different length. There's not that big of a size difference between 175 and 165. Hold on, give me one second. So I got right here, guys. Someone said that's not a micrometer. What is it? I don't know, but he said it's not a micrometer. So 175 versus 165. It's like 10 mil. Is it 10 mil? Literally 10 millimeters, yes. So what is this? If there's not a micrometer, what is this? Micrometer. <laughs> now it's broken. Now it's no meter. So right here, I almost got it exactly 10 millimeter. Which, That's, is, which is one centimeter. Yeah. That's how much of a difference. Now some of you guys are all, yeah, 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 I can tell the difference. You know what, if you were racing, or you were riding at a professional level, I, I agreed 100% that you feel it. But for the majority of the mass, you're not gonna feel that little bit of a difference. But wouldn't it be that on both sides? So then if you add it up. Still, I still don't think on the average person, they would not be sure. able to feel it. A professional one, absolutely. They'll be able to feel because they ran so long, they understand. So let me, let me explain to you guys, where some of you guys are like, you know what, I'm gonna have 165. So what I got right here is two frames. Holy rust. Yes. So this this is the old uh, volume uh, Jason N. Yeah, you got the little dollar sign right there. So you know, some of you guys are like, hey, you know what? I wanna use 165, I wanna use 165. So back then, back then when this frame was made, now you guys just bear with me, I'm kinda just like ballparking it. This crank right here would sit and it would, it would clear this. 
Okay, this one barely clears it. Look how much space I have in between the crank and the bottom bracket. See this right here? Look how much space I got right here, right here. Now, granted, I'm just holding it like this, so I might be a little off, but look at it. And it's close, that's, one, that's a 175. So now if you put a 165, look, now look at that space right here, it's decreased. So that little 10, that little 10 millimeter right here, it's a make or break because if you can see the frame, how this frame kind of skew in, that makes or break it. But if you look at a more modern frame, Okay. If you look at a more modern frame, you look at it, this part right here, it's even closer. So it will hit absolutely. But what you guys don't know is the length of this. I gotta go fetch that frame again. <laughs> so if you guys look, again guys, I'm just gonna ballpark it because we're not, we're not in NASA here. So if you look at the bottom brackets, it's pretty linear. Look how long this is. So if you have this right here and a 175 right here, okay. Keep in mind, the peg's gonna stick out right here. Most people, when they ride, what do they ride? They ride on their foot. Their foot's gonna stick out right here because they're not riding right in the middle. So it's gonna clip right here on the pegs. Now, on this frame, it is a little longer. You guys, you guys notice, it's about an inch longer. This right here, compared to the middle, you got like about an inch of difference. So when you guys are running the 175 on a newer frame, that's the thing that's gonna happen, is that the length of the crank, it's gonna hit right here, unless you space it all the way out. Plus, the length from here to the rear axle, it's very close and you're gonna hit. So that's why, guys, the 165, it's perfect. And now, even some of you guys, you guys are on the bigger bikes. I know you guys are a little bit more old school. You guys are like, hey, you know what? No, on the bigger bikes, you guys don't need that extra leverage because you got your gearing is already lightweight. So you don't need it. You're gonna go on there and you cruise. Now imagine if you guys were cranking, imagine your arm. If you're cranking like this, Going like this versus you going like this. Which one will be more tiring? Going like this with a longer stroke, you're gonna be way more tiring versus this. So, the shorter cranks with the lighter gear, it's actually better. You guys understand that? Now, the one thing you guys want to talk about, go, okay, well, then why does, why does certain riders running new, new style frames Run long, run short. Once you get to a professional size, it's totally different. It's all preference. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, maybe, I, I knew I should have hit up Drew. But didn't Drew Berzensen run two different size crank? That was the rumor. Maybe. So the rumor ha has it that he runs two different size crank. So he didn't hit his peg? Huh? So he didn't hit his peg? No, because because if you guys look, if you guys look over here. You're not wearing flip flops. No. You blew them out. So if I was on the frame, and I was standing like this, and I was to pinch, look at where my knee's closest to the seat versus here. So he actually run a shorter crank on the left-hand side to bring his knee a little bit closer. That was that was the, the myth, the rumor. I'll hit him up and I'll, I'll clarify that. I'll, I'll, I'll shout it out next time. But people gonna say, well, that's gonna feel really weird when he rides, but you ever watch Drew ride? He rides transition. What do you guys do when you guys are on top of the deck? You guys go and you guys just drop in and you guys just pump, you guys pump. You guys aren't even pedaling. Hell, I mean, you guys could run like a like 100 mil and it wouldn't matter. Now, if you guys look at some of the Flatlanders, they run really short, right? They run like even 150 because they're doing all that spin, they're doing all that. Their foot is close together. Their foots are, are not far apart. So even like if you look at some of the, the trail riders, they run long just because they're just so used to it. And you know what? Sometimes the trail rider is more like a cult thing to them where, you know what? 165 is street, 175 is more trails. So there's no, there's no wrong, there's no 
right. If you're gonna run 175 or 165. What I'm telling you guys is, it's okay. The 165, this one's actually 160. It's perfectly fine on your guy's bike. It's not gonna make the pedaling any different. It's gonna be all feeling all, all wonky, all weird. Okay, guys? Hope you guys understand that. Um, you know what? If we get really good results from this, what I wanna do is I'm gonna do a test. I'm not gonna tell you guys what the test is, but it's gonna have to do a test with different crank. We'll do a video on that. You kinda got the idea what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so stay tuned and it will surprise you. Shout out to your boy too. Shout out to the guy that left that comment. Just a quick one. Don't go into depth. Oh, you know what? I'm not gonna even give him the time. I'm not gonna even give him the time, dude. I'm not. Now everyone's gonna be curious as to what happened. So just leave it that. Leave it there. We'll talk about it in another video. What? They're gonna be like, what happened? Oh, there. Oh, okay, fine, fine. Just quick. Don't have to give a full detail. So, so, so we we had a person comment and said that saying that we need to change the way we say aftermarket. Because we say something complete bike come with aftermarket parts. When if it comes stock on the bike, it's not aftermarket. But if it comes, but if that's the case, if you go and you look at uh, Sunday Kink uh, Stranger, they in the description it say it comes with aftermarket parts. So when the bike comes with better parts on it, how do you explain that from the the, the cheaper parts I guess on it? Well, how do you explain the difference? You're gonna say better? No, it's just aftermarket parts. Is it wrong? Is it right? I'm not going to say, but all I know is that the factory uses it. The brand uses it, so I'm going to use it. So I'm not saying he's wrong, or I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying they use it, so I'm going to use it. Pretty simple, right? I'm not hating on it. You guys got any comments like that? Let, let us know. We're, we're just here to help each other out, guys. All right, guys? Like, hate, uh, or... or Unsubscribe. No, like this. They should. They. Hey, they should have. They should. Have, they should have a little emoji like this, like like kind of medium. Neutral. Gender ne neutral. neutral. Yes. Yes.